What if Zacian, or more specifically, Zacian Crown, were in Gen 1 Ubers? Now, I'm sure pretty much everyone remembers just how busted this girl was in Generation 8. And many people said that she was the greatest legendary, and by extension, the greatest Pokemon of all time. Even better than Mega Rayquaza. And I 100% agree with that. Now, my friend Myrox, we debated on this, but... Zacian is just busted. And Gen 1 is no different. I know we all think that Mewtwo is super good, and that's because it is. But Zacian here is... <laughs> this thing was just not made for Gen 1 in mind. And with a very, very small move pool, this thing is still able to just absolutely destroy everything in Ubers. But I don't think that surprises anyone. It's going to be using her stats from Sword and Shield. Because these games always use the oldest generation possible. So that's the same reason why when I eventually do God of War. It's just going to be a pure psychic type and not fairy. And this is definitely a great thing for Sashian. Because I think she definitely prefers 170 attack over 150. I would argue 150 is more than enough. Especially when you have sword stance, but <laughs> I don't work at Game Freak. What do I know? I'm not good at making balanced Pokemon, apparently. But yeah. Like, you can already see the moveset on screen. This thing is terrifying. We're gonna- we always give it its signature. But even without its signature, it would- It would be significantly different. But that part is true. Because without its signature, it has Slash- and with this moveset, I guess it's way more fair, but that's only because you get walled by Gengar and Rhydon. But even with this like particular moveset, there's no doubt about it that this girl will just be absolutely wrecking everything in Ubers. And to be honest, because Mewtwo's in the format, I don't even think Gengar and Rhydon are that much of a hindrance, because... I mean, in all honesty, why can't you just use, like, Zacian, Crown, Mew, Mewtwo, and then just three or, f yeah, just like three, like, Ice or Psychic types. There, There's nothing that can really stop Zacian either way. But since, usually for these types of videos, I always give them their signature, we're gonna, like, look into that. Which makes the video more interesting anyways, but... Oh dear god, does it make her so much more, uh, unstoppable, I guess you can say. Starting off with that typing, the fairy type is just completely useless, because there's no dragon type moves, the only one is dragon rage that's always set damage, and in gen 1, set damage is more so a typeless move. I guess there's submission, which Zacian would take neutrally. But I'm just going to give you a big spoiler alert right now. This thing is not scared of Machamp, nor is it scared of Hollywrath or Hitmonlee. <laughs> but hey, maybe a Hitmonchan like Ice Punch that, that, that might freeze you. That That's pretty spooky, I would say. So this thing, for all intents and purposes, it might as well be a pure Steel type. And we've already gone over Steel type a few times in this, in my series. It is resistant to normal psychic and ice, literally the three most common attacking types in the game. Sure, you're weak against Earthquake, but unlike Dark, Steel actually does work properly. So for psychic types, they will always take Dark type moves neutrally. Nope, not for Rock types, not for psychic, not for Ice types. <laughs> Baphomet Blade is gonna hit super effectively, because of course it is! Like, why would the Jinx need to take, like, a 100 base power steel move neutrally? That's just ridiculous, and unfair to Zacian, wouldn't you say? So, we already know the typing's great, these stats should probably speak for themselves. 115 defenses is already just super great on a Pokemon with a very good defensive typing. 92 HP makes it even better, and 148 
That makes it the fastest Pokemon in the tier. Because even Electrode is base 140 speed. Why? Why do you need to be faster than Electro with an even better crit rate? That just seems completely unnecessary. And then 170 attack. Uh, you know, I don't know why. I don't remember what the highest attack in Gen 1 is. But I just feel like Zacian's might be a little bit higher. But, you know, it, it's still fair and balanced, I would have to say. In all honesty. Even if... But let's be real, even if Zacian only had base 80 special... I don't think anything will be different. I think this thing would by far be the best Pokemon in Gen 1 Ubers. Its moveset is literally everything it could ever want. You have a really strong move. You have Hyper Beam. And keep in mind, because of Stab, like, this is literally hitting around the same amount as Hyper Beam. Except there's no resistances or immunities. Or I guess there is, like, Electric and Surf. Or not serve water types. But then you have Hyper Beam. And I think the only one that can survive a full... Well, not full attack. When Zacian uses Sword Stance, it gets up to like 800 something. So that's close to being like max attack. And I think Slowbro is the only thing that can survive it at full HP. Yeah, so Starmie... Jolteon, like, all these things are not going to survive. <laughs> and we have agility here. Because even though you have 148 speed, don't you think losing to Paralysis is just a little bit unfair? I think it is. There's no reason why Zacian should have to worry about status. So that's why you have agility. If something is dumb enough to use Thunder Wave on you, you can just go for agility. Not only are you outspeeding everything even harder, but... You just can't ignore the paralysis speed trap altogether. So there's just nothing that can stop this thing. The only thing that can stop it is either really bad paralysis luck on their end, or getting a burn from Fire Blast. So like, I guess Moltres sees a lot more play now, but not only does it still get killed by Hyper Beam, but even if Zacian gets burned, if it goes for another sword stance, its attack is suddenly at 600 and something, and it's using, like, basically 250 base power moves. It's gonna just annihilate everything, everything, and god forbid it goes for a third sword stance. I don't even want to think about how much attack it would have then. Some other moves that it technically has are Rest, Substitute, and Swift, and like I said before, it does have Slash, which you might want to consider using. Just because it being a guaranteed crit means it's always going to do decent damage. But when you have the best crit rate in the game, not to mention when you have Sword Stance, you're probably better off using Hyper Beam. When you have attack that high, you are not really worried about not being able to KO something. And even if you do, you have 115 in both defenses, as well as a pretty good... I would say even generous HP stat. So even in a worst case scenario, you don't kill something with Hyper Beam, which I think is only going to be Slowbro and Rhydon exactly. What are they going to do? I guess Rhydon can kill you with a critical earthquake, but uh, they're, they're a fool. They're trying to, to like rely on that. But they might have no choice. I, I kind of wish like these... Or not really. I was going to say I kind of wish uh, Z Zacian here had, like, screens. But no, it definitely doesn't need that. But it is kind of weird that most of its moveset is just moves that don't exist in Gen 1. Like, it has, like, an 80 special attack, and I'm not even sure why. Because I don't see anything here other than Hyper Voice. But as you can probably tell, this thing is just a little bit more broken. In fact, I'm going to say Sword Stance is usually more powerful than Amnesia whenever I do videos like this. And I think that's because there's just less things that can really deal with them. With Amnesia, all Pokemon that like can Gen 1, it's for the most part centered around high special Pokemon anyways. Not to mention Pokemon like 
Swellbro can, you know, use Amnesia themselves. But almost every single Sword Stance Pokemon is usually something like Sand Slash or Kingler. And while you got stuff like Rhydon and Cloyster and Swellbro, like you, there's not really a good move that's boosting your defenses. And outside of those three, which have high defenses, it's not like they have good recovery. Unlike a lot of the high special Pokemon, like, you know, Starmie and Alakazam. So Sword Stance almost always ends up being just the more powerful thing. Now, chat, I'm going to need you to answer me something. Do you think Zacian becomes the best Sword Stance user in Gen 1 Ubers, and maybe even Gen 1 OU? I always say that for most of my videos, but I... I don't know. I can't tell if this thing would be good enough to be better than freaking Pinsir. Do you guys think Pinsir can beat Zacian Crown 1v1? Bind can trap it, you never know. But let's just get into the replays. And before I do, I want to point out how this is the first time where I've had so many replays where I needed to put all of them into two comments. It was literally like, this too much for it to handle. And yeah, there's like 21 in total. We're going to be in for a rough ride. But also, since I just showed you it, you should definitely join the Discord server. It's pretty cool. A lot of people enjoy being in there. And if you like what-if scenarios, well, we have tournaments, entire formats, and just talk about those things every day. Should be great. But for now, we're starting off with the King of OU, or basically, I mean, King of Ubers, Mewtwo. Oh, what does Mewtwo do here? To be honest, not much. Granted, I'm gonna say Zacian only getting a 3 hit KO is pretty huge. It definitely makes Mewtwo put up a better fight than most Pokemon. But if it doesn't have Thunderbolt exactly, it can't actually 2 hit Zacian. But I guess it is very interesting to know that it's not just Zacian, quick sword stance, and a quick button and win. It needs to get at least, it needs at least three turns to actually beat the Mewtwo. And that's enough for Mewtwo to like, do half damage, which isn't really enough, not even close. But I will say that it does mean if Mewtwo does manage to get, well, if it even it's just one Amnesia before the Zacian gets sent out, it can maybe win. But even then, not all Mewtwo sets use the Thunderbolt. If it has Ice Beam instead, Mewtwo is kind of screwed. Like, what exactly does Psychic do? Not much, really. Not because that's Steel Typing. And while ideally Mewtwo getting, let's say, an Amnesia, and let's just assume that it only can use Hype uh, Thunderbolt from now on, it's still kind of hard. Because as you can probably tell, Zacian, you could just very easily splash into, like, pretty much any situation, really. Like, I can't think of any real reasons or any situations where Zacian is just not good at all. As a lead, it can probably just kill whatever you have set out. As, like, a mid-game cleaner, you better believe this thing can revenge kill. Wave game cleaner, we don't even want to talk about that. So... It's a better matchup than most things you would expect. But I'm going to say that Mewtwo is a good matchup for Zacian. Because the Zacian needs to commit way less in order to win the 1v1. However, if you guys had arguments for it being Could Go Either Way, I am absolutely open to those. Because I'm kind of open to Mew being at Could Go Either Way. Because with one Earthquake, it... Well, both of them can pretty much bring you down the red... Or not red, but like, close to red HP. Which means if the Zacian was paralyzed and it didn't get to go for agility yet, Mew could theoretically be pretty threatening. So, I think if Mew sets up before the Zacian gets taken out, it's a little bit more threatening than the Mewtwo is. But it's not that much better, in all honesty. But, something I am curious on is if you predict Zacian switching in and going for Earthquake first. But who knows. Speaking of Earthquake, just like Mewtwo, Tauros is surprisingly only a 3 hit KO, I think. Could be a damage range. But I don't think it matters if it is or isn't. 
because it's the same result either way. Tauros might get a critical earthquake and do a lot of damage, but the Zacian most likely can tank the hit and win in the 1v1. This is why I think Tauros with Fire Blast becomes mandatory. It could be what actually helps it become better than Snorlax and Chansey in Gen 1 Ubers. But even here, freaking just one sword stance. Did you see that? The Zacian is burnt. But just one extra sword stance was enough to Oko the Tauros. That's the type of power we're dealing with here. In fact, it kind of almost makes me want to put Tauros in great matchup. But I think Burn is just annoying enough to where I'll put it in could go either way. But it, looking at this replay again, I'm now kind of leaning more towards good matchups or even great. But there was just so many things that are already in those tiers that I kind of feel like I should just keep it in could go either way just for the sake of the tiers looking prettier. Snorlax doesn't do much better. I guess it has self-destruct, but because Zacian is a steel type with 115 defense, it tanks it pretty easily. And that's with an earthquake here. I was curious to see if a sword stance is enough to Oko Snorlax. So we tested it out here, and Snorlax did, in fact, survive. A uh, barely, but it definitely did survive. Doesn't really make too much of a difference. But I am... Well, I'm not, there, I'm not sure if I'm impressed or not, because of how high Snorlax's base HP is. Also, yeah, Chansey is kind of struggling a little bit here. I think... Well, honestly, I think for going up against the Zacian, I think the fact that it was still in yellow HP is very surprising. Like, I, I wouldn't expect that. So good for Chansey. But what about Reflect? Well, Reflect doesn't matter too much, because again, you have Slash as well. So even if you, like, like everything else was specking into Reflect, Chansey, Alakazam, Snorlax, let's say even Starmie. Exhaustion just has a way to get around that either way. But again, it has Sword Stance, so it can very easily just power through that Reflect. Not to mention you would need a waste to turn use Reflect in the first place, which means Exhaustion might just kill you anyways, in all of honesty. <laughs> there is nothing Chansey can do to Exhaustion except pray to God that it gets a freeze. Alakazam is just so much worse. I don't think I need to explain that to you either. I don't think Recover is enough to actually heal off the damage. I think Zacian just kills you there. But it doesn't need to. Because it can just take the opportunity to go for Jody. Now there's literally nothing that can stop it. Unless it gets really unlucky. But that's probably not going to happen. Now, Cloyster has high defense. And it is so thankful it has that water typing. Otherwise, there's no doubt in my mind it would have been Okoed. But it has no way to fight back. Which means the Zacian can most likely go for Sword Stance if it wants. Hell, with it being asleep, if it really wanted to, it can, might even, even go for Agility. That way you can outspeed other Zacians. Which, in reality, is probably the only thing that can actually beat a Zacian, your own Zacian. But it's not even like Jolteon can outspeed a weakened Zacian after it's, you know, after, like, one of them faints. Because it's faster than Jolteon. And Reflect Aerodactyl, something tells me, isn't going to beat it either. <sighs> it's, it's, it, this is just ridiculous. Executor can try to put Zacian to sleep. But with the fantastic typing, such as Fairy Steel, not only can it just sit there and try to wake up, and Executor will need to get a few different special drops before Zacian needs to worry. But even in a worst case scenario, Zacian is an excellent Pokemon just for pivoting. So the Executor cannot do much, no matter what. Now, next off we have, I believe this is Gengar. It's the same thing with Executor, but so much worse. Because Zacian has a great chance to just crit. Meaning that... Gengar, a lot of the time, won't be able, able to do anything. It'll just be KO'd. I guess it is worth noting that if we were to only use Gen 1 moves, 
it would be an unwinnable matchup, but does anyone here think Rhydon and Gengar would be enough to actually make this thing fine for Ubers? Because I do not think so. Not at all. And like, I was just talking about Jolteon. I guess one benefit it does have is that it resists Sashian's signature move. And a critical Thunderbolt does do exactly half. Which is good, but not enough. I wouldn't dare put this in a could go either way. But I guess Jolteon of all things could be a way for you to paralyze it and then trick it into maybe using Hyper Beam on your on against like Rhydon. It's I'm, I'm not even sure if that would be the good meta or not. Because in all honesty, instead of having to adapt this Oshian, it would probably just be way easier just to ban it that anything goes. But if you would rather have Zacian in this format, let me know. And like I said, unlike with dark moves, steel moves do absolutely still work on, uh, you know, their respective types like ice and rock. So Zacian can just Oko Jinx no matter what. Good chance it might be up with the Oko no matter what. Or actually, probably not because it's Gen 1, but still. And against Rhydon, if... This was hitting for neutral. Maybe Rhydon could be a check, but it's not. So that's really unfortunate. It does kind of make me wonder if, let's say, Sand Slash would be more used. But then again, Rhydon is still way stronger. So even if you get rid of a super effective weakness, it's still just getting two shot no matter what. And you're not doing a lot of damage either. So Upper is kind of a weird one. I think this is technically the best matchup. Because Hyper Beam can't kill with just a sword stance. So theoretically, with paralysis luck, Swobro can win. Like you just saw right there. But that doesn't look too reliable. Now does it? Especially since. Like I said about Mewtwo, it needs to run Thunderbolt in order to do damage to Zacian, which means in practice, even if Swirlbro can do kinda decently against Zacian, at least compared to other things, Mewtwo will just be there to kill it in its place. But I guess in that point, Swirlbro is just letting Mewtwo set up so that it can take out Zacian. So you know what? Yeah, no matter what, Swirlbro is just looking out for us. Isn't that wonderful? I love him. But I don't think Zacian does. But, as you can see there, Swirlbo can definitely do some good damage. So that's nice. So I guess you're probably better using your signature first and then Hyper Beam. That way you're not taking a lot of damage. But does it even matter that much? Because it can still just Oko basically everything in the format. Starmie can paralyze you. But then it doesn't really do anything. So the only way it can really fight against you is just a critical s Thunderbolt or Surf. Which is just not going to do anything, really. So Zacian can't beat this. Unfortunate. We got two more replays left. And we got two of the most powerful Pokemon that are in the Gen 1 OU format. Starting off with the less powerful one, we have Zapdos. Who can... Probably do more damage than Jolteon with a crit, but that's about it. It might be able to get a crit and do some decent damage, but Zacian can just finish off the Zapdos no problem. This is the same reason why I don't think Moltres can beat Zacian either. Because you would have to paralyze the Zacian, then you would have to switch into something else or just let something die, and by that point, Zacian probably already went for both a Sword Stance and an Agility, meaning Moltres never got a real safe opportunity to be switched in, so the Zacian could just kill you. But luckily there is at least one Pokemon that can take on Zacian. And it's probably obvious what it is, but if we're just going with raw defenses, that's theoretically the only thing that can beat Zacian. How do you beat a sword? You just use a big shield. And we don't have 
shields in Gen 1. But luckily, we do have something even better. Now, with Harden, Metapod is able to just tank anything Sashian throws at it, and even a Sword Stance isn't really enough, meaning Metapod always just gets a guaranteed KO sooner or later. So good for him. So here is the tier list. I think I forgot one of them. Yeah, I did. Hold on a second. Uh, let me just put this there and this here. There we go. Yeah, this is a little bit too broken, even for Gen 1 Mewtwo standards. Like, you know what's bad when you're forced to put Metapod and Kakuna on your team for defense? Like, those are only Pokemon you use in a last, like, ditch effort. Because normally they're so powerful that everyone unanimously agrees to just gentlemen's agreement into not using them. But Zashian somehow managed to make that happen. There's definitely no doubt in my mind, not only is Zashian better than Mewtwo, and... I don't know if it's better than Slacking or not. I'm gonna say probably, because even though Slacking has Earthquake, Amnesia, and a Stab Slash, I feel like Zashian is so just so much better. I think its speed and its typing are a big part of that. So, if I had to rank the strongest Pokemon of all time, for both actual competitive and if we go with Pokemon put in Gen 1 Ubers, definitely Zashian crowned. Then Mewtwo, and only then am I going to put Mega Rayquaza. I still think Zacian is better than Mega Rayquaza in almost every single circumstance. And one day I will go over Mega Rayquaza. I should probably do Mega Rayquaza first though. But what do you think? Do you think Zacian would be fine in Gen 1 Ubers? Do you think we just need to find a way to play around it? Are we going to like use like, I don't know, like is Flareon going to become like an OU meta threat? Because it can, like, somehow survive, like, a signature and then hit fat with Fire Blast. I'm gonna say probably not, but you never know. And should I go over a regular Zacian? What's it called again? Zacian Hero? That would be more interesting since it would lose the Steel type as well as losing a signature, I'm pretty sure. Meaning it would, in fact, be just walled by Gengar and Rhydon completely. I don't know, it's interesting. It, you guys come let me know what you think. The only thing I can confirm though is that Zashin kind of strong and just a little bit better than Zamazenta. Thank you all for watching. This is Groundback. And until next time, I look forward to hearing from you.